If the internet was the seat of a polytheistic pantheon, amongst the gods would be lolcats, pirates, raptors, ninjas, and robots. You might think that these hilarious ideas have been played out, but apparently not. In fact, some of them are now spilling over from blogs and webcomics and captioned JPEGs into computer games, seeking to exploit the internet's adoration of ninja robot suicide bombers. Beatnik Games has created Plain Sight. Plain Sight is a multiplayer deathmatch game where you play as little ninja robots. If you've ever seen that dreadful cultural phenomenon, The Weakest Link, you'll understand exactly how the game works. You earn energy for killing enemies, but the energy isn't actually yours until you bank it, just like The Weakest Link. But you don't bank by shouting bank, rather you have to blow yourself up. This kills you and any enemies nearby, and banks all your energy, converting it into points. Whoever has the most points at the end wins. As you kill more enemies, and your energy increases, your multiplayer also increases, meaning you'll get even more points. But if you're killed, you lose whatever energy you had unbanked, and your killer takes it for himself. This means you really have to walk the razor's edge. If you want the really high points, you have to take the risks, go for multiple kills and build up a large multiplayer, and earn lots of energy before banking it. It's in your best interest to do this, but if you're killed before you bank, you lose it all and someone else takes it. This adds a surprisingly rich tactical layer and a palpable sense of tension to the game, as you accumulate more unbanked energy, the maximum being determined by the server settings, but it ranges up to a maximum of 100. You become better at killing, but you also become larger, making you the prime target of every other player in the game. The game becomes a mad panic to detonate yourself once you reach a certain size, and you'll definitely experience terrible lows where your game winning combo was stolen from you just as you were about to pop, and exhilarating highs where you steal someone else's massive pile of energy before they could suicide. It's a great mechanic, and it's so well implemented in plain sight that it's actually hard to believe it's not a common element of competitive online games that's been around for years. Coupled with this fantastic mechanic is your fairly novel way of getting around. Most maps are made out of a series of platforms, but rather than falling off of them and plummeting to a horrible death, you can run on all sides of them, with the gravity always drawing you inwards. You can even leap from the gravitational sphere of one platform to another, in such a way that you can effectively fly as you orbit these platforms. If this sounds familiar, it's because it's straight out of Super Mario Galaxy. Plain Sight doesn't really add anything new to the idea, but it does implement it flawlessly. There's a real skill requirement to navigating these gravitational spheres without setting foot on the ground, which will become your goal as you get better. And although it's something you can become quite adept at within a few hours, it will take an exceptionally long time to truly master it to the extent that you can always be fully aware of exactly where you'll go when you jump, bank left or unleash a dash. Your dash, which is also your attack, will launch you forwards. With this dash move, coupled with the robot ninja's natural ability to jump, and your own talent for navigating these gravity fields, you can literally fly. It's genuinely exhilarating, and it's extremely fun to just fly around the levels. It's not something you realistically want to do for more than a few minutes at a time, but it's definitely a concept that could be applied to other games with success, and I'd love to see the idea fully explored. It's actually more than a little reminiscent of the quick grappling hook in terms of what it does to the deathmatch. You have a remarkable freedom to navigate the levels, it's fast paced and exciting, and ultimately, it will probably only be a small, insular group of hardcore players who master it. The dash move I mentioned a moment ago is your only form of attack. When you've got an enemy in your sights, a reticle appears. You then press and hold your attack button to charge it up. Once you're within range and it's fully charged, your reticle turns red and you release the button to launch at your enemy. If you make contact, you kill it. Enemies can leap out of the way if they're deft enough, or if they attack you as you attack them, you deflect each other. With good timing, a shield can also be activated to block the attack, but more on shields later. The combat system is so simple, lacking any real complexity, that it's immediately apparent that the focus of this game is not the actual fighting, it's the manoeuvring and the tactical use of suicide to bank energy. That's really what sets Plain Sight apart from its peers. Though, which games exactly could be called Plain Sight's peers, I do not know. This game is quite singular. I like the energy banking system, and I love the map navigation and gravity stuff. The big problem I have with the game is that you earn experience points as you play, for pretty much everything you do, including dying. This experience is used to buy abilities, from things like double jump and faster charging dashes, to a personal energy shield and notification when you're being targeted by an enemy. These bot abilities make your character much more powerful. Particularly effective is the ability that increases the speed at which you charge up your dash attack, as is an ability that reduces the time it takes for you to activate your suicide bomb. 
the insane thing about this is that it's the players doing well who earn the most experience points and acquire these abilities earliest in the round. In any competitive game reliant purely upon skill, being good is its own reward. Plain Sight feels the strange need to reward the best players, those who are already doing better than everyone else, with powerful abilities earlier than everyone else. Abilities that make a big difference. It's like a handicap system in reverse. And as these upgrades aren't persistent, instead resetting each round, there's not even the opportunity for bad players to eventually grind up to the top level to be on par with the experts, which persistent experience would allow. It's like the game was deliberately designed for a tiny niche audience of hardcore experts. That's not to say the game is impossible to just jump in and play, but the whole game is geared towards an insular hardcore niche, making it intimidating or alienating for everyone else. Which frankly might be just as well, because there aren't many people playing. I'm sure, at least I hope, the numbers will grow, but I've had a hard time finding more than 30 people on at a time, in total, over all servers. To say it's not a very popular game at this point would be an understatement. I know it's a new game, but these low numbers are disconcerting for the community, and actually finding games that aren't full is quite a challenge. And it's especially troubling, as the single player mode is barely present. Wisely called practice mode, as this is not even slightly a substitute for real players, the single player lets you play most of the game modes and maps, and set your own rules like number of bots and round time limits. You'll find that the hardest bots pose no challenge whatsoever, and that this game really is just a glorified tutorial. It's a nice option given that the online play is pretty intimidating, so you can figure out what's what before competing online, but the mere presence of bots also teases at a genuine, worthwhile, challenging single player option that is sadly very absent. And none of this is helped at all by the bugs. One of the major bugs early on was some serious graphical corruption, but it seems like that's been fixed. Right now I'm regularly experiencing a bug where I don't respawn after dying, and I have to leave and rejoin the game, which of course resets my score. Because of that, I've not yet successfully won a single game online, so I haven't got the achievement for completing a round. And I'm sure you know how much I love achievements. I think it's impossible to not love the art style. The game uses a simple cell shading effect and bold lines which makes everything extremely clear and easy to see. All of the platforms are natively shades of grey or brown, but change colour as you step on them, their colour matching yours, and your colour being determined by how much unbanked energy you have, which means players pretty much anywhere on the map can see if someone with a pot full of energy is running around on the platforms. It's some fantastic use of colour that's both creative and functional, and it encourages you to fly it as much as possible. The sound effects are all fine, with nothing being particularly special and nothing being annoying, so that's a no-score draw. While what little music there is is enjoyable, but limited only to menu screens. There are five game modes, Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, and a couple of others. There's not much creativity here, but Deathmatch alone is frankly more than enough, and I get the impression that Capture the Flag will be a lot of fun with the flying mechanic. But I don't actually know, as I haven't had the opportunity to play it, as there's never anyone on the CTF servers. There are about a dozen maps, ranging from floating platforms to a line of ships, and even what looks like a giant cassette tape with its tape pulled out, or something. There are more than enough maps, and the fact that you fly around them means there's far more effective real estate in every map than there is in your traditional ground-based map. After 30 minutes of plain sight, it seems like the best thing in the world, with its flying robots and ingenious energy banking slash suicide mechanic. It's fast, it's fun, and it's exhilarating. But play for 5 hours and you'll come to see that it's deeply flawed and that it's overly biased in favour of especially good players, to the extent that it's alienating. Unless you're one of the few obsessive hardcore players willing to devote serious time to mastering the game, you'll most likely find Plain Sight to be a game fun enough that you keep coming back to it, but flawed enough that you won't ever stick around for long.